Namaskar and good day. My heartfelt congratulations to the Australia India Business Council on its 35th anniversary. I was invited to chair the council in 2000, a time when it was in a somewhat parlous state. Its membership was restricted to major corporations, their number was 20 and falling. The coffers were virtually empty with regular annual deficits or tending bankruptcy in a few years. We expanded the membership to include SMEs and individuals, won many new corporates, got many of them to become major annual and event sponsors. The blockbuster Australia India address was initially delivered by Premier Bob Carr in Sydney and then extended to all capital cities, followed by events covering the Indian budget and hosting Indian government and business leaders and delegations. Specialist industry chapters provided focused expert support. We were routinely invited to join Australian delegations to India. We were also able to transform AIBC, which was only active in Sydney, into a truly national body with chapters in all states and the ACT. This was largely achieved through a merger with all Australia-India Chambers of Commerce around the nation, a tribute to the constructive and strategic spirit of their presidents and committees. This happy result made AIBC the only bilateral business council in Australia and the go-to organization for governments and businesses in both countries. These achievements were the result of teamwork, a truly constructive effort of the national board and chapter presidents and national office bearers. In particular, Mohan Montero and Divya Raghavan, whose contributions were well and truly heroic and well above the call of duty. 35 years is a significant milestone and worthy of both celebration and reflection. The bilateral relationship has changed dramatically since Rajiv Gandhi and Bob Hawke inspired its foundation. India is now our seventh largest trading partner and sixth largest export markets. And Indians are now the first or second largest source of migrants and international students. Potential is even greater with second pace in migration students and trade over the next decade, realistic ambitions. AIBC has played a significant strategic role in supporting this progress. And I must congratulate and thank all my successor chairs and the boards for their leadership during and after my term of office. The highly professional administrative executive Executives, notably Wendy Farrell and Sam Dutt, also deserve acknowledgement for their excellent, efficient, professional, and cheerful service. Looking to the recent past, a major and welcome development has been the explosion in the number of Indians living in Australia, many of whom are making their mark in establishing their own businesses and reaching the higher echelons in both governments and corporations. This has diversified the community, resulting in numerous cultural and philanthropic initiatives, as well as new bilateral business associations around the country. This has increased competition for AIBC, some of which has been unconstructive and damaging. As the preeminent leader, AIBC must take the high ground, demonstrate statesmanship and promote unity by working constructively with other associations. AIBC itself must be the role model for all other bodies, setting an example of internal unity and constructive collaboration. I wish the good ship AIBC and its office bearers, Mon Voyage, as it sails to new horizons in the next 35 years and look forward to its continued leadership in the Australia-India relationship. Thank you.